Hi everyone, I'm Mike from Comp3 Interactive. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a more professional scene manager to help you switch between scenes in your game more seamlessly. Uh, this video will be setting up the initial manager scripts and uh, getting the basics of our scene transitions working. The second video will revolve around making the transition between scenes look and feel a little bit more like loading screens, so make sure you check that one out. And uh, let's just jump straight into it. As you can see, I've got a very simple project set up. There isn't much in here yet, but we'll fix that soon. Uh, all I currently have are two scenes, as you can see down here. Uh, scene 1, Scene 2. And each of them has a button, which will load the corresponding scene. And also a label, just so we know exactly where we are. So let's start by creating a script for... Uh, Buttons. So we'll right click create C sharp script and we'll just call this uh, button script. No, this button, button will do. And we'll open up button in Visual Studio. We can start by removing the update function, we won't be needing that. And the first thing we need to add is actually we can remove the start function as well, we won't need that one in this class. What we do need to add though is a public void and that will be load scene. Now load scene is going to need the scene build index of the scene that we want to load so we can just pass in an integer i. Now to run this and actually load a scene we're going to be needing to use unity engine dot scene management now that'll give you give you access to all the functionality for loading scenes. So simply we can just do scene manager dot load scene and we'll pass in the index that we've passed into our load scene method. Now if we just save that and jump back over to Unity, on our button we can now add our button script. And on the onClick event, we'll reference the button itself and call load scene. Now we want to be able to pass in here the integer value, like I said before, of the scene build index. So to find your build indexes, you need to go to File, Build Settings, and here we see we only have one of our scenes in. We've got scene one at a build index of zero. So if we just load up uh, scene 2 really quickly, jump to build settings and then we can add open scenes and we'll see that scene 2 has then been added under build index 1. Pop back over to scene 1. So now we know that to load scene 2 we need to go to scene index 1 and Back to scene 2 again, we need to add the script to our button again. Make a reference to itself. Call load scene, and we want to go back to scene 0 to load scene 1. So we can check that works. If we play our game and click on the load scene 2 button, we enter scene 2 and then back to scene 1. So everything's working currently but we do want to make this a little bit better. Now don't get me wrong this could work for you in uh, certain, cir certain circumstances but uh, as you can see it jumps between the scenes without any, um, any fade, any discernible transition between scenes. Now in certain circumstances that's, that may be what you want but for our instance, what we want to do, we, we want to fade the first scene out, load the second scene in the background, and then fade back in to scene two once it's loaded. Uh, that's pretty simple to do, actually. So what we want to do, we'll start by creating a new canvas, and we'll call that Scene Controller. And uh, underneath Scene Controller, we can add an image, just a plain image, and we'll just give that the name Fader for now. 
Now what we want to do, we want to make sure that our canvas is sorting layer is something really high, so we'll pick a thousand. Uh, the reason we want to do that is we always want our scene control fader to appear above any other UI elements that you may have in your game. And we'll just make our image black. Now we could have an actual image for our loading screen, but for our instance we're just going to fade to black and fade back in. We may add the image in the second part of the tutorial. Uh, we'll just see how it goes. So now our scene controller needs its own script. So we can create one more script. We'll call this scene controller and open that up in Visual Studio. Now in here we can get rid of our update function and the two system namespaces. So what we'll need to be using in our scene controller is Unity Engine, obviously, using UnityEngine.UI because we're going to want to access the image class for our fader. We're also going to need Unity Engine dot scene management, like we saw before, so we can actually load between our scenes. And we'll need one more, which is System dot Collections. Now, the reason we need System dot Collections is we want to perform our loading tasks inside of a core routine, and we need System dot Collections to access core routines. Now, as you can imagine, we only ever want one scene manager in our game at any given time. It wouldn't make any sense to have any more or any less than a single one. So, we can make this a singleton. Now, a singleton will just make sure that we only have one active at once. Uh, if there already is an active instance of that, then it'll just destroy the object that's just spawned in, making sure we only ever have the one. So, to do that, We'll just add a private static scene controller and we'll just call it instance. And then within our, we'll change this to awake. So within our awake method, we can check if, if instance is equal to null. If instance is null, we don't already have an instance of our scene controller game object active. So we can set instance equal to this. And then we'll check if instance is not null. We already have one, so we can simply destroy the game object that this is attached to. Now, so we don't have to load a new instance of scene controller in every scene. We can make this persist in between each scene transition. Now, to do this, all we need to do is, in our await method, when we first create our instance, we can make sure we don't destroy on load and passing our game object. Now that'll just make the object persist between scenes. And now we can just add our image and we'll call it fader. We'll populate that in the inspector in just a minute. Now. The next piece of functionality, core functionality, that we want for our scene controller is we want to be able to call this from wherever we want. So to do that, we can create a public static, now static being the keyword there, void, because we're not going to be returning anything, and we'll just call it load scene. Now load scene is going to need a build index, so we can pass that through. Next, we want to make sure that our fader image is the correct size. Currently, as you can see in the project, we just have a little black square. So what we can do, we can get our fader image, get the rect transform parameter, and set the size delta equal to a new vector2. And for the X and Y in this, what we're going to want, we're going to want the user's screen.width and screen.height. Now what I usually do, I usually just give it a bit of a buffer. 
I'll add 20 to each one just so it overlaps the screen view a little bit. And then we'll also make sure that the fader itself isn't active when we start playing the game. So we can do fader.gameobject.setActive and set that to false. And now that we have a callable method, our load scene, we can get working on our core routine that'll do all the scene transformation for us. So we'll start by creating a private IE numerator. We'll just call that fade scene. Now fade scene is going to need multiple parameters. It's going to need the integer value for the scene index that we're going to. And it's also going to need a float value for the duration of the fade in fade out time. Now let's start by setting our faders game object to true now that we want to use it and we're also going to be able to set it to false once we've finished so we'll just put that in there as well and then inside of that we're going to need a for loop and our for loop is going to be t equals no int no <laughs> Sorry, float t equals zero, and we want to be performing this for loop while t is less than one. And on each step, we'll increment t by time dot delta time divided by our duration. Now, within this for loop, we want to access the faders color so we can get hold of the alpha value. So if we set that to a new colour, and the new colour being 0, 0, 0, and then this is the one that we're interested in, the alpha value, we'll use a function called mathf.lerp. Now, what lerp does, takes in two values and interpolates between A and B. So, we want to interpolate from a completely transparent image, 0 on the um, alpha scale, to a completely opaque image which is going to be 1. So we want 0, 1, and we want it to take our t parameter for its step value. And it's as simple as that. What we do need to do, though, while we're inside of a core routine, we do need a return statement so it knows that this statement is something that we should be waiting for. So for that, we will just yield return no, and for the fade back out, we can copy the exact same statement, but this time we want to lerp from completely opaque, 1, to completely transparent, 0. And then the actual load functionality here would be scenemanager.loadscene, and that will be our index that we've passed in. Now this step is completely optional, but I like to do it because it adds a little bit uh, bit more believability to the loading. You'll see what I mean in a second. Uh, I like to add a float called wait time. Now what I want wait time to do, I want it to fade to black, load my scene, but before I load back in, I want to perform the wait function. I like to do this because a lot of my scenes are quite small they don't take that long to load so you often find it lo uh, fades to black loads your scene and then immediately starts fading back into the new scene it may be something that you like it's maybe something that you want personally i just like this method and we can simply just yield return new wait for seconds and we can pass in our wait time now, wait for seconds is exclusive to core routines. This won't work correctly outside of a core routine. Now, we should be able to hook all this up and see this working. So, if we jump back up to our load scene static here, what we can do, first of all, we need to make sure that all the arguments that we're passing in match. So, we'll just copy those out of our fade scene, and we can call instance because 
uh, call routine is not static and we're calling it from inside a static method so it needs to be the instance version we can do instance dot start call routine instance dot fade scene and we'll pass in our index our duration and our wait time now to make this a little bit more user friendly we keep our script nice and small we can add some default values to our duration and wait time so we'll add default duration of one and default wait time of zero so now you're going to be able to call load scene using just the index on its own and then it will take one second to fade in and fade out and it won't have any wait time or you can call with all three which will have your index, custom duration and a custom wait time. So we want to call this from inside our button script. So we no longer need to be using scene management and instead what we'll do is we'll call scene controller dot load scene we'll pass in our index and we can wait for two seconds for example won't let me do that yep there we go so we'll load the scene that we've passed in it'll take one second to fade out it'll load the scene wait for two seconds and then take one more second to load back in so we'll save that jump back over to unity we don't need to amend anything in the editor so we rerun the game we'll see that our fader image has disappeared we've also got a don't destroy on load object above here which contains our scene control object and if we load scene 2 we see that we fade to black load and then fade back in after the wait perfect and the last final thing that we need to cover is this works really well on smaller scenes that load relatively quickly but if you have a very busy scene that you're trying to load in and Unity takes, for example, 10 seconds to load that scene. Currently, we're just going to fade out, do our little bit of fake waiting time, and then fade back in regardless of whether or not that scene is ready to be displayed yet. So we can fix that if we jump back to our scene controller, and this is the line that we no longer want. What we want to do is create a async operation we'll just call that AO and we'll set that equal to the scene manager dot load scene async and then we'll pass in the index so now that we've set up our scene to load asynchronously that gives us access to a couple of a uh, couple of variables in the async operation in this instance we're interested in the bool is done now what is done will do if you can already guess it will be false up until the operation is completed then and only then will it set to true so what we can do we can wait with a while statement while AO is not done we just want to yield return null so now that's going to load in the background and while it's loading we aren't going to continue now we won't see any difference in our game because like i said our scenes are very very small so the load time in between is just a fraction of a second plus our two seconds forced waiting time that is there just to cover you in case your scene loading time runs over and that about does it for part one of this series. Uh, tune in to the second part where we'll be adding a couple of extra features. Uh, we'll add in loading text, uh, loading icons. Uh, we'll change out the image to be an actual image rather than just a black screen. And we'll see if we can throw anything else in there. So I've hope, you, uh, I've hope you've learned something on this. And I'll see you again soon.